there by the four tops that's the album of the week i'll play a couple more tracks uh soon but uh, it's time for this Yes, and I've got in the studio the, uh, the um, Kevin Dean, who I would say international guitarist. Is that correct? Thank you, guitar instrumentalist. Guitar instrumentalist. Yeah. Um, and uh, the reason why you're here is that uh, you're involved with the Grand Order of the Water Rats. Yeah. Uh, and there is a charity show going on the second of uh, February on the Sunday. I think it's the fourth. Is it the fourth? I don't, I, Sunday the fourth. Oh, yeah. Sunday the fourth. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Sunday yeah. the fourth of February. Um, and uh, that's at the St George's Theatre here in Great Yarmouth. Mm. And uh, really, we've asked you to come in and just uh, let us know why, uh, what it's all about, what's uh, the, the about the charity as right. well, and uh, who else is on the who's on the 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 play the the, the incredible list of artists and stars that are going to be there as well. Lots of acts on, yeah. So over yeah. to you. So well, the Grand Order of Water Rats is a fraternity of show business gentlemen, um, from actors to musicians to comedians. We have lots of people in show business, um, including chefs as well. We have the hairy bikers and uh, lots of people from television and films. Um, and I've been a, a water rat since 2015. I'm very honoured to be a water rat because there's a very limited amount in the whole world. There's only never more than 180 water rats in the whole world. So what is the charity about? Well, initially it was set up in 1889 to help people in show business who are struggling financially or health to look after our own, to look after, you could maybe get a comedian who's on hit bad times and uh, can't pay his bills or can't perform through health reasons. So it was set up to help, you know, not only brother water rats, but entertainers you know, in, in, in the business. And there's, there's, there's a, a very large amount of talent in, within the water rats, yeah. isn't there? I mean, past rats, we had uh, Charlie Chaplin, Tommy Cooper, Laurel and Hardy. Uh, the, the list goes on. Bud Flanagan, Tommy Trinder, all these great names we sort of grew up with, you know, in, in, in show business. Um, current water rats, we have Brian May, um, Nico McBrain from Iron Maiden, lots of, you know, sort of rock stars film stars, and the list goes on. So me, as a non-famous rat, as I said, I'm really honoured. And when I found out I'd become a member, got voted through, I was ecstatic. And it's great. It's made loads of great friends in, in the order. And did you find that um, uh, where, where people have asked you to be a member, things yeah. like that, that um, it's because you've done f previous work within charity yes. as yeah. well? Is that the, the presumption? Is that yeah. the, the past bit? But if you've done a lot of work for charity beforehand, yeah. that, that, that they, they invite you to be a, a member. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't really ask to become one. You, you, well, no, they ask you to become a, you know, a, a water rat. But I had appeared on many um, water rat shows in the past because I was friends with water rats. And they'd say, hey, Kev, come and play. Do us 20 minutes on this show in London or do us a, a spot here, there. Uh, and eventually it was um, Chaz McDivitt, the fr uh, freight train. Remember freight train? Mm -hmm. He said, um, I'll nominate you, to, I'll propose you to become a, a water rat. And as I said, it's on the Wikipedia page, it explains the process of the um, voting and how you become a member. And it's quite difficult, you know, mm. to, to do it. Mm. So when I got that call, um, yeah, so that did help doing past shows for the rats. And we do occasionally occasional sort of variety shows to raise funds yeah. and you know you haven't got to be a water rat to be helped by the rats you know we get they the water rats get letters all the while from people mm -hmm. asking for help so it's and apart from show business people uh, we do uh, help children's charities and things like that so it, it does expand beyond show business yeah so your char your charity uh, work that you do is not just for um, like a a central thing it's it's expanding and always there for other people exactly yeah yeah people can, can apply and ask for help and things like that yeah. and do you think that <clears throat> because it's got such a, a a grand name the grand order of the water rats yeah it's actually the, the grand order of water rats. of water rats yeah, yeah. yeah. 
sorry, when you find that, do you find that people will go, well, why has it got that sort of austacious title? Or is mm. it because it was, um, it, it, it deserved that because of the, the talent and the people that are, are part and parcel of it? Well, it is very historic. I mean, the lodge rooms, and we have a museum, and it's you know, very grand, hence the grand order. Uh, the lodge room is like Parliament, you know, it's, we, we wear our regalia collars, you know, and it sort of looks quite Masonic. It's not, we, you know, I mean, some members are, but it's, we're not Masons, we get mistaken for them sometimes. Mm. So you imagine the big, the big chairs and grand um, things we do, or the, the building, as I said, that the museum is full of um, history, the Charlie Chaplin's cane, mm. um, all these historic items from show business. So to answer your question, I mean, I guess it, it just acquired that title from the outset you know to, to, to express the energy of the, of the order really the grand order of auto rats and with the show that you've got coming up mm. um, how many of those shows do you do around the country well we did one in November in Wiltshire in Devizes very similar show to this one uh, in the theatre they don't happen that often I mean they might, you might you may get one or two a year because everybody's working you see everybody's doing their TV shows or yeah. um, making films, making records, touring and things like that. Um, so it's not very often we do a variety show, charity variety show. We're hoping to do more in the very near future. Um, so yeah, this is the only one this year, I, as far as I know, that's going to happen. And there's a, that I'm involved with at least, you know. Mm. And, and with, the, with, with the show, how long, uh, it, I presume it, because of the, the talent, and all the people doing their different shows and bits and pieces, mm. um, it must take a lot of organisation to get that in. So that's why yeah. it takes ages to well, sort out. With this show, I think there's 11 acts on, and we have some fantastic names, and you're right to actually put the order, and, I mean, we're all going to turn up on the day, and it'll be arranged and produced correctly, but we're not just going to turn up and decide at the time who's going to go on first. But there, it does take a lot of thought to... To, to arrange the the format for the show, and uh, what a place to play! The St George's Theatre is a lovely, lovely venue, isn't it? It's a, it's a beautiful it's venue. It? Yeah. It's a beautiful venue, and I think it's something that um, it's like one of those things, those venues that when it's it's on your doorstep, yeah. you don't appreciate it, yeah. and if it disappears, you suddenly go, "I wish we had something like that mm. in our town." Mm. And it is a wonderful venue, uh, um, and the, it's. It's just a beautiful building. Yes. And that's the thing. A lot of the buildings now, you go to places mm. and all right, they are uh, theatres. Some of them are too modern. You suddenly think, mm, that's not yeah. too uh, pretty. And then there's others which are really, really good. And that's the thing. Um, right, I've got, a, I've got a record lined up for you. Okay. And then after that, we're going to talk about the, 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 the acts, acts yeah, that are going to be on. Yeah. Um, and uh, I thought you'd appreciate this because as being a guitarist and instrumentalist but also a, a superb um i thought i'd play you a couple of records that i've got out of my collection right so Look i thought this one this one's a bit of the shads ah. bit of the shads and uh, from 1960 from an ep actually that i picked up it was actually from uh, france is it's it? a french ep uh, but this is the shadows with apache let me go sort it out yeah oh, sorry is it shadows to the four is it, is it huh? shadows to the four ep yes is yeah, it, I think yeah. it is, yeah. Yeah, Apache now uh, and uh, uh, by the shadows on a free GP which I've I brought out of the collection with, and it's got on there as well. Quartermaster Store, Jet Black, and Drifting as well. Uh, I'm sitting here with uh, Kevin Dean. And we're talking about the uh, the Grand Order of Water Rats uh, event, which is going to be happening on the 4th of February, yeah. here on a Sunday at the uh, uh, St George's Theatre here in Great Yarmouth. And uh, we've talked about the event, but well, I want to talk about who's going to be starring. OK, well, Rick Wakeman, the rock legend, keyboard pianist, will be um, on the show. I think it's the first time he's performed there. I'm not sure if he's performed in Great Yarmouth before, but... I know it's the first time he's uh, going to play at the St George's. Uh, I mean, Rick, of course, was in the band Yes and appeared on many incredible records, including um, David Bowie's Hunky Dory. 
and uh, Life on Mars. He does a great instrumental version of Life on Mars. So it'd be fantastic to uh, have Rick there. Um, I've got the list here because, I mean, I said it's 11 acts. I've written them, written them down because it's quite a lot. Steve Hewlett, one of the top world ventriloquists. Absolutely fantastic ventriloquist. Very funny man. He was a finalist in um, Britain's Got Talent. And he's always really busy around the world. So, you know, great to have Steve uh, on the bill. Kevin Dean, not sure about him. That's me. Uh, Ross Lee. Ross Lee is an actor, comedy actor. He's famous for um, The Pranker. BBC um, sort of hidden camera series from uh, about 2011, 2012, where a bit like... Um, a bit like Trigger Happy TV mm. and, and Candid Camera, yeah. all those, but more of an edge. And Candid uh, Camera, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> the Pranker, look up yeah. The Pranker, Ross mm. Lee. And it, it, it appeared in uh, endless, numerous films and TV shows. He's had his own TV series, Shoot, which was on Children's BBC. Just finished a Hollywood film called The Bubble, mm -hmm. Judd Apatow film, um, big Hollywood movie. He'll do a spot, very funny man, very eccentric, uh, great, great character. Uh, we've got Mark Porter. Singer from the Glen Miller Band, a name in his own right, the Mark Porter Band, but he is one of the most respected um, lead leaders of, of uh, big band singers, and so he is the the Glen Miller vocalist. Rolo, he is a comedian and all round entertainer. I'm getting through these. Ian Richards is comparing. Ian Richards is a, a very well known after dinner speaker, comedian, very commanding, brilliant voice. Uh, and very funny man indeed. Steve Barclay. Um, again, a fantastic variety act. All round, very funny. Mike Martin, comedy songs. Good friend Mike Martin. Nina Hewlett. Steve Hewlett's wife. She's a great singer. Now, she's the only um, non-rat on the bill, but she's a rattling. People often say, well, you know, are there not ladies in the water rats? There's an order called the Grand Order of Lady Rattlins. And Nina is a brilliant vocalist. She'll be on doing a spot. And Paul Adams, stand-up comedian. He actually, I think, arrives back that morning from Hong Kong doing some shows out there. I think it's Hong Kong or somewhere like that. He phoned me today and said, what time should I be there? <laughs> a bit jet-lagged. So, yeah, that's that's the bill. Um, and so of course it, yourself. Of course. I did say, yeah, Kevin Dean. Yeah, yeah guitar yeah. instrumentalist. <laughs> so it really is a, a full-on... Good old fashioned, well, not old fashioned, but a variety show like you used to get. Yes, yeah, like, like what was expected at the end of the pier and yeah. all those things. And they're, they're, and it's funny because those sort of shows have sort of started to make a little bit of a comeback on certain piers. In, um, I know the one, uh, I know they did one at Cromer. That's right. And uh, <clears throat> there's one um, also uh, going on at Clacton, isn't there? There's yes. One. Yeah. I think those sort of shows yeah. are, are sort of bringing back what entertainment should be about. Well, the thing is, Chris, you know, we're being in Great Yarmouth. I mean, Great Yarmouth was the capital of summer seasons, wasn't it? We had the Britannia Pier, the Wellington Pier, the Royalty, the Windmill, mm. um, ABC, all these theatres. And I think it's really only the St George's and the Britannia that's still putting shows on. Yeah. Of course, the Hippodrome, yeah. which is a circus, but there was uh, a wealth of entertainment in the 70s and 80s. I mean, you'd have choices of so many shows. Yeah, Freddie Star show, Russ Abbott, and two two houses a night as well, packed. Before people had the internet and telephones and things, they'd go to see a show. That's right, because they'd see him on TV, mm. then go and see him on the show and, yeah. do, and do that. And that's where, all right, yes, the internet has been <clears throat> the, sometimes a downfall, but yeah. also uh, has been social media has been the, uh, sometimes a, a thing that people have to use to get things out there. Of course. Um, yeah. But we, in terms of yourself, uh, what sort of uh, tracks are people looking forward to hearing when you're you're playing well I, I mean i do play the shadows not just the shadows no. all the different um guitar instrumental acts like um the sputniks and i'm not actually playing one of those on on that particular show but you can expect um i won't well i'll, I'll tell you one of the numbers i'm going to play it's from the tornadoes mm -hmm. the most famous sort of keyboard organ instrumental which features guitar mm. But I play the whole thing on the guitar, and of course that is, begin with T, what is it? Uh, tango? No, Telstar. Telstar, Telstar, of yeah, yeah. Uh, which was, of course, um, um, produced by uh, Joe Meek. Yes. In his studio above a dry cleaners and a leather shop yeah. uh, in London. 
And of course, Joe Meek uh, got his unique sounds mm. by recording things like, for example, the hum of the machines of the laundrette. Wow, yeah. yeah uh, and also yeah. dripping taps. Yeah. So he, he, was, uh, he was, in terms of a recording um, guru, in terms of a producer, producer yeah. he produced some incredible stuff. He also produced some very poor stuff. But he produced, like anything, some yeah. incredible, incredible stuff, especially the, the hotel style. Yeah, yeah, it's classic, isn't it? And it does make a good guitar instrumental as well. I've, I used to open up with it years ago mm. in the 90s, um, touring around places, and then uh, didn't do it for a while. And it was only recently I thought, oh, I'll start doing that again, because it is very popular and it does make a good one. And as a guitarist, do you find that you prefer electric to acoustic, or acoustic um, to electric? Well, it depends what the track needs, really. I mean, I don't really use acoustic on stage. I have done in the past. But for a record, for example, you'd use an acoustic guitar if you want that acoustic sound. Yeah. But my act is, is electric guitar, the Stratocaster. I do feature the mandolin on some shows as well, like Zorba the Greek, things yeah. like that. But, um, yeah, the Fender Stratocaster, famous sound, which is quite shadow-esque. Um, and, of course, we've um, a, a past king rat, Bert Whedon. Yeah. He was a, a king rat. We have yeah. different officers and different yeah, yeah. Uh, Prince Rat King Rat so his famous track was Guitar Boogie Shuffle yeah. and I do that sometimes as well but of course this particular show we're all reasonably limited to time because of the uh, amount of people who are on the, people on the show on stage. Yeah. of course there was always that famous How to Learn to Play a Guitar in One Day by Les Paul no, that was actually oh, Bert. Oh, that's Bert Wheaton. Um, Sorry, that's Bert Wheaton. Play in a day. Yeah, play in a day, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. And so he 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 like learned to play a guitar in a day. Mm. Was Bert Wheaton? Two chords. And yeah. of course, it was like that thing. And then of course, Les Paul yeah. was another great guitarist, innovator of like echo. That's it. So you've got so many there, and of course, all the famous guitarists of the sixties and seventies were called well from the set from the 60s, like Jimi Hendrix, yeah. uh, Jimmy Page. Well, session guitarists, yes, for uh, and played on so many records mm. that you didn't know who they were. Yeah, um, and you had that. And Glenn Campbell yeah. was a session Brilliant. guitarist, yeah, for Phil Spector, sort yeah. of thing. So you got all those um, people that uh, equated become famous later on, yeah, who cut their teeth on being a musician, yeah, first before being a singer. Funny enough, one of the water rats is Fraser Hines mm -hmm. from um, when well, he did many. Doctor Who episodes the and, day, and Farm. Farm but recently he was just telling me that he made a record I'm not sure when it was and it was I think connected with Doctor Who and Jimmy Page played guitar on that record right got you oh brilliant so, especially when I think Fraser Hines was involved with uh, the Doctor Who uh, I don't know if he was on the, one of the films but I know he was involved with the, the TV series wasn't mm. he um, I think over 100 episodes yeah. of the um Possibly the Troughton. Yes, the Troughton ones, yeah. yeah. Patrick Troughton. As, as the yeah. Uh, assistant. Yeah. So it, that, that's amazing. But um, but again, it's those stars that are in the background mm. that get known for the music later on. And yeah. that's beautiful. I've got another track I've lined up for you. Right. Now, this is a band called The Cannonballs, uh, which is on Coral Records in 1960. And this is <laughs> a Cannonball Caraboose. <laughs> that's going to be going on at the St George's Theatre and if you've never been to St George's Theatre it's a beautiful place It's uh, it's got a lovely um, uh, balcony all the way around that side lovely stage got a great view as well of the stage it's because it's small it's intimate but it's personal and lovely it's a lovely sound there as well um, and uh, Kevin's here to talk about the show that's uh, the charity event uh, that's going to be on Sunday the 4th of February um, and uh, what time to kick off on? Seven thirty. I think the doors open at seven. Yeah. And the show will start at seven thirty. Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, there's access for wheelchairs. There's all that sort of thing. So it's a really great place to. Uh, the, the, there's no issues with access for people. And it's um and there's no stairs because it's just uh, well first first couple of stairs going up to the door. But it's still a lovely place to go to and get in there as well. And um, not just this event, but where else do you go and do your your apply, as I would say, apply your trade, but I would say more really um, show your skills off to it. Well, over the years, I've played all over the UK, um, summer seasons from Eastbourne to Scarborough, London, um, Hunstanton, all over. I mean, literally, there's not probably a town I haven't played in sort of the main venues abroad over the years Spain, Portugal, Africa, Madeira. Um, and it's just been a pleasure. I, I tend to sort of pick and choose now and do less 
and just sort of do the ones I want to do. I think the days of the summer seasons for me, which is for a personal choice, because I'm busy recording and producing as well, mm -hmm. music. Um, so I think the last full-on year for me was 2016, where I was doing um, probably about five or six shows a week. Mm -hmm. And then I had a phase before that where I sort of calmed down and just pick and choose shows and then sort of not got dragged back into it, but started taking more on. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's nice to, especially the charity shows, to do those. I like being involved in variety shows where you are working with other people rather than just, say, doing um, a 45-minute cabaret act or maybe a 25-minute, for example, I mean, I just thought of one. Um, there was one I did supporting uh, a well-known 60s band in Cromer at the pier. So I did like 25-minute warm-up support. Yeah. Um, and another one was local to here, the, the band Slade. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they, they were in concert at Vauxhall. Yeah. The arena, Vauxhall Arena. And I did an hour support slot for them. So you can support well-known acts yes. or appear as the Star Cabaret, yeah. like a 45-minute spot. Yeah. But getting back to what I was just saying, I do enjoy doing the variety shows where you're working with other people. And, of course, they're all friends. Mm. So we have a great fun backstage and get together after. And it's just brilliant working with friends, and especially all of these water rats. It's just an absolute and, pleasure. And also because you're raising money for yes. that work, that charity mm. uh, and the amazing work they do throughout their years yes. of being together. And also, you're, you're like I say, you're the foundation for the future as well. Well, yeah. And that, that's the other thing. You know, all right, we, we all have... Things and, and one of the things that we've found here with, with where we are at Harbour Radio um, is I do a slot called the Self Preservation Society, yeah. which is actually a little bit from the from the, my favourite film, Italian of job. course, the Italian Job. Um, and uh, one of the things I, I I I concentrate on that is why there's a day when you shouldn't. All right, we all have our ups and downs. Hmm. We all have. Everyone has those bad days and good days and stuff like that. But sometimes people don't know where to turn to. They don't know where the help is. They don't know how they, they, they look. They, what they do is they see the bad things and not think, oh, then there's got to be a solution. Mm. Whereas there should be. They, there can be a solution. Absolutely. And the, but sometimes you're blinkered by the fact that everything's so bad, mm. you aren't aware of the solution is there. Mm. Um, and I think charities like yourselves mm. assist those others that are around in the country and things like that, yeah. to, to support them, to keep them going. Because I think over COVID and everything else with how uh, money has gone stupid in terms of bills and costs, yeah. that your work that you do as an organisation in supporting other charities yeah. is essential to keep those services to help those people. Definitely. And yeah. I think that one of the things you have to do, and the way we look at it, is that whatever little bit, of work you do, whether it's one concert or mm. it's one event or it's ten events, mm. that little bit of work will help not just one, but have a domino effect on others. It snowballs, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does snowball. And that's the factor of what we do here at Harbour yeah. is that we try and say, look, we are the worst community. Mm. We're here for the community. If the community need help, and I, like I say, I just played an advert that we just had for the Great Yarmouth and Galston Young Carers. Mm. Um, because it's an organisation that needs not not help but awareness to others. So some people don't know about it exists, but then they do. It's like the postmasters and everything that's gone on with the post office and yeah. everything. I don't want to go into the politics because I'll get on my soapbox <laughs> and start ranting, as everyone would do. Yeah. But it took a, it took a TV program for people suddenly going, "Oh yes, we've got to do this," and start waving their sticks, mm. even though there was. Panorama, there was all the other things that went on previous to that and all the court cases and all the news. It took a TV programme mm. to bring awareness. So I sometimes think that entertainment brings awareness to more. So factors of yourself yeah. and the other artists that are going to be involved yeah. are raising their awareness about the Water Rats, yes. what they do, yeah. and what is the future things they can do as well. So when you're doing your show on um, on the Sunday, hmm. will you have people there that will be able to say, this is what we do? Well, yes, there'll be um, probably pamphlets and stuff like that. There is a, a, a side, well, friends of the water rats, people can join 
with an annual subscription and get newsletters um, about the rats and what they're up to and what they're doing, what events we're putting on. Um, so, but of course, people can go onto the websites and, and look up about the Grand Order of Water Rats. But I like what you said about the, the different charities kind of resonating with each other, because, of course, the, even the St George's Theatre itself is a charity, isn't it? That's right. And they do a lot of, uh, a lot of, lot of, lot of things for the local community. Um, like warm hubs and things like that, which is fantastic, isn't it, for, for a charity to do. So all these things coming together, uh, raising awareness of each other, and just, you know, it's a good thing, isn't it, to, to, it sort of snowballs on and resonates uh, further and further. So that can't be a bad thing at all. It's, again, it's run by volunteers. Mm. It needs help. It's something that uh, Harbour Radio is actually involved with, that, uh, well, I'm personally involved with, that I'm doing a fundraiser that's going to be raising funds for us here at Hub Radio and for St George's Theatre. Oh, brilliant. So that's an event in May. Yeah. It's, um, <clears throat> it's called the Celebration of Soul. So it's going to be, um, it's just going to be music that's going to be played out via vinyl and a bit of, but there's five DJs going to be around. But again, it's to raise money for the needs of the, the, the theatre and for us. Yeah. And if it's something we can raise awareness of the theatre so people can go there and go, I never realised this existed. How yeah. good is this? And yeah. of course then, they know about more about the the, the, the the theatre itself. That's the most important thing, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. And all these events, I mean, recently one of the members of the Water Rats, Mike Martin, uh, did a skydive. And of course, people sponsored him and all the money went to the, the order. Uh, something I don't know if I would do, but yeah, he, he went up with his son and jumped. So individual rats will do things individually as well as collectively, which is great. Lots of things people have done over the years but and you know just general donations people will make and of course people who are buying tickets for this show are making donations by doing that yeah yeah and they're going to get a great show yeah at the same time yeah that they're going to absolutely love absolutely yeah. well um i've got to say thank you very much for coming well, in it's been a total pleasure and and, and yeah. talking about the event again um who are the acts again that are going to be on rick wakeman steve hewlett Kevin Dean, Ross Lee, Mark Porter, Rolo, Ian Richards, Steve Barkley, Mike Martin, Nina Hewlett, Paul Adams. And there may be some extra rats who are coming to see the show. I know there are some coming to, to, to see the show to support who we may get up on stage, um, you know, on the finale, just to sort of take a bow, yeah. who are not necessarily performing. Yeah. Because we do have companion rats as well. There are 20, I said there's 180 water rats, but we have 20 um, companion rats who are royalty. I mean, the king right. is, is a is a um, companion rat, yeah. as was his uh, father. And people uh, who are like in, not necessarily performers, but connected with the business, or yes. very much involved with business side of things. Um, so some of those may, may attend as well, you know. Um, yeah, so a, a big bill. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a great show. And everything's there. I mean, you've got music, you've got singing, you've got dancing, you've got comedy. Mm. You've got ventriloquism. Uh, it's going to be bang, 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 one thing after another, yeah, intervals, and same no one, again. No one can say they won't be entertained because that yeah. is the beauty of it. It's, it's about the entertainment part, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. about the entertainment. It's about doing the, the, the thing of raising money, yeah. entertainment, but also it's the fact of it's. I don't want really to get through this. Uh, I don't like the term wholesome, right? No. What I think about is I think that it's, it's sometimes it's entertainment. That is, um, is something that's not going to hit you at the back. You know, it's not going to hit you, and you suddenly go, "Oh, I don't like that." It's something you're going to go, "That was nice," like a big hug. Yeah, it's entertainment that gives a big hug. That's yeah. what I, that's how I put it. Plus, also the, these acts who are on this show, they're all top of their game. Mm. So they, 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 you know, everybody performing are going to be doing the sort of the, the, the ultimate of that particular thing they do. You know, in, in that in that society, in that in that business. Yeah. So yeah. uh, there is something there for everybody. And <laughs> I think it's going to be a feel-good show. I think people are going to leave feeling good, mm. uh, a nice night out. And that, that great feeling you get when you leave a theatre and having seen uh, a, a show like that, it's going to be one of those sort of things, I think. And yeah. I'm excited. I really am. I think it's um, less than three weeks now, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. not that long. But, and uh, tickets are available via St George's yeah. website. Yep. which is stgeorgestheatre.com. Right. And it's on our via ticket source, so you go onto the link, you click mm. on the link, 
and then you can buy your ticket online like that. Yeah. There is also a box office, yeah. so they can call the box, because some people are not able to get onto the phone, uh, get onto internet, the uh, internet, yeah. Yeah. but there is a box office where you can actually get it as well. Um, and uh, what I'll do is I'll put the link to the, um, the, uh, the show and the box office phone number on <clears throat> my Facebook page, if anyone wants to know it, and also we'll put it on Harbour Radio as well, so it's available for people to get that access to it. And like I say, it's a, um, I think an incredible uh, job you do. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, Chris. I think it's been a nice chat. Really nice. Really enjoyed it. And, and all the best to your events that you do. And, uh, we, and, and, and the station itself is brilliant, Harbour Radio. You know. I think the thing is, when, when you've got... Um, and I've only done this for a few years, mm. right? Um, um, I, 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 I don't, I, the only instrument I can play is a violin when I was a kid. Right. Uh, right. And uh, and that was it. And then after that, I gave it up. And I always wanted to play a guitar, but I got I got fingers like sausages, so I couldn't <laughs> even I couldn't even play it on a board at all. And so They're okay, those fingers are fine. No, I could. And th- the thing is, I always look at people playing a guitar and think, oh, how good is that? That is that is superb. That's like that's talking, but with music. It's like a person who can play a keyboard. I and I know a very good friend of mine who's. Um, a great guitarist um, in a band called The Signatures. Right. And he plays some fantastic... His acoustic playing is superb, uh, where he's gone to places and he's gone to events, and he's played acoustic guitar, and he's played classical, and he played rock, he plays soul. He's got a whole plethora of guitars Mm. all over the place that he has. Um, And I just think that, I mean, all the people who've got that talent, me... All I've got in a memory of is I know what records are records, and I know I can remember music and stuff like that. We all have talents. I mean, what you're doing now is a talent, isn't it? You're broadcasting, you're presenting. We all have our own. Well, they could get anyone else in to come do like what I'm doing now, but I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, sure but no, no, no the, the the thing is, is that is that I is you sit there, you listen to someone who can play something, mm. um, and you just sit there and go, wow. And I remember going to Norwich one day, and there was a, there's an old piano in the in the Castle Mall. Right, it used to be. I don't know if it's still there. And there's this old gentleman. He was in his seventies, definitely, and he was just playing because yeah. it was free to play. Just turn up and play it. Yeah. And he was, and he was just playing. Super. I just sat there and listened to him for about an hour, mm. and then he just walked off. No one was. Everyone just was walking past him. I think they've got one at King's Cross, haven't they? I've seen yeah. one there. And it was just incredible to yeah. listen to that and listen to someone's talent. Yeah. And I think that's what I like listening to. I like listening to buskers because some of the buskers are fantastic yes. with what they play. Yeah. And they are superb. And they deserve sometimes a bit more, um, uh, what do you call it, acknowledgement for what they yeah. play. Yeah. Um, now, do they do it because they want the money or do they do it because they like to perform? Probably Maybe a bit of both if they if they need to get s- earn a living and uh... it is it's both I think yeah. and I think that's the beauty of it. So I actually I actually think busking should be done more. Oh yeah. Than way you know and I can remember the buskers in the in the tubes where they used to walk in London in the eighties and so. They're still there. I think yeah. they've got they, you sort of clip your phone on them now to pay them. Like yeah. Sort of um, <laughs> what do you call yeah. it? Contactless. Yeah, they've got contactless. I remember when they used to be get moved on, but now they've got official busker areas. They, they do it on the tubes. I see them quite often. Yeah. Yeah, which is good because yeah. that's that's part of the beauty of it. So yeah. I think that's an encouragement that the the music's there. Exactly. And yeah. I think that's what we should always think about music is is important because when you need to relax or something, sometimes the music is the most important part. It is. Yeah. Yeah. But what I've done is I've lined up one last record for you. Oh, what is this? It's a bit of Dwayne Eddy. Brilliant. Yeah, and I thought, well, what do I do? Do I get you a nice one? Uh, and I thought, yes, I will do. And it's on side two of the record, and it is, uh, of course, only right for you, Rebel Walk. Brilliant. <laughs> 